Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. I am excited to deliver this part two of the word that I released yesterday entitled Crossover and Let It Go. And God is so serious about circumcising your heart, about getting your heart right so that you can move forward. A lot of you have been stuck in the wilderness, circling around the same mountains of confusion, hurt, pain, being unclear, uncertain, not knowing God's voice, whatever it is that you're facing, God needs to circumcise your heart. He needs to create in you a new heart. And this is not only physically your pumping heart, but this is also here in your mind, renewing your mindset. Um, and that's you becoming a new creature in Christ as you let go of your will for his will. So I wanted to share with you guys how God did this for me because I went through the comments and I saw a lot of you asking the question, but how do I let go? How do I let go of what they did to me? What my parents did to me, my mom, my dad, my siblings, uh, some of you moving through life in this victim role, not able to move forward and redefine your, your future, you know, redefine your past rather to move into your future. So that's you turning from victim to victor and God just switching your mindset, really renewing it so that you look at it just as Joseph, there it is. When his brothers came back to him and he told his brothers that he knew that it wasn't them, but God who allowed it for the greater purpose and I'm paraphrasing this, but he saw what God did in, um, after looking back, being able to look back in hindsight and how he used his brothers for the greater good for him to save his family. And this is what a lot of you are going through. You know, um, some of you just outcasted and um, I guess I can say the phrase black sheep. Uh, but you're, you don't fit in. There it is. You, you've never fit in with your family, with friends, like certain groups you've tried to um, join or just, you know, friendships that you wanted to foster. You were always put in the back, talked about, used and all of this stuff, but it's for the greater purpose that God wants to use you for um, in this hour as he's waking you up. So I have some scriptures I want to read to you guys, but again, I want to share just how God healed my heart as he moved me to Dallas. I went through another wilderness experience. Like I kind of went through it partially before he moved me here. But when he got me here and when I had to learn how to rest in him, he started dealing with my heart and unforgiveness, things that I didn't even know were still in me that I had stuffed down just past hurts and pains and, and things like that from family members, friends and the likes. Okay. And so I began to pray and ask the Lord to first, because I didn't know how to pray. And the scriptures tells us that we are to spray, pray, not spray, but pray in the spirit at all times, right? Because the spirit intercedes for us, the Holy Spirit. He knows what we need. He is all wisdom, so he knows. So as I was praying in the spirit, the Lord began to reveal to me that it was my heart that needed to be cleansed. And so I began to ask the Lord to create in me a clean heart and renew a right mind and spirit in me. And so... As I began to pray that, I remember one night in particular, I didn't record this uh, vision, but I remember it vividly. It had to have been sometime in 2020 before I even started this ministry. And um, I remember going to sleep because my heart was so troubled, it, troubled and it was so saddened just from the isolation, so to speak, uh, being in the new land that he moved me to. Um, he has stripped everything and everybody away from me that wasn't good for me so that he can train me up to be before you guys as I have been for the last um, two years almost now. And so anyway, I remember just laying down and closing my eyes. And as soon as I closed my eyes, I was immediately in a vision. And it was like I was in this operating room. And I remember... I knew I was laying on the bed, so I was inside of myself, so I knew this was for me, right? And so I'm, I'm looking at this man figure, and he had on a, a white coat, 
and he goes in my god i feel the presence of the lord so strongly you guys <laughs> Those of you who know me, the Holy Spirit always hits me so strongly. I be back here about to fall out, you guys. But when he does that, I feel that all in my chest, all in my belly. It's like a, um, a welling up of his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his love, uh, the Holy Spirit, his fire. I just feel it all pressing on me. That's his, the weight of his glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So anyway, as I'm, I'm laying there and I see this man figure as a doctor, and I knew it was Jesus, okay? And he takes his hand, and I knew I was about to go into surgery, you guys. And he takes his hand, and I knew he went in and did something to my heart. And I ended up just falling asleep. Like I told you guys, as soon as I closed my eyes, I was in that vision. But I went to sleep, and I didn't wake until the next morning. Like I had peaceful sleep. But when I woke up, I remembered the vision. I pray that over you right now. Those of you who are not understanding, ask the Lord to create in you a clean heart, renew a right mind in you, a right spirit in you, a loyal mind, a loyal spirit within you to heal you from past hurts, past pains, misunderstandings, Whatever it is that is holding you back from crossing over into the things that God has for you. That is the abundant life he has for you. Those are the plans he has for you to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I slept through the night in perfect peace. And when I woke up, I remembered the vision, but I also felt new, if that makes sense. Like I literally felt like a new creature, a new being. I knew I had a new heart because those of you who know me, you know me, but I know a lot of you are new to the channel. Um, God is just sending you guys here by the thousands per week, okay? So I don't even think I did an introduction at the beginning of this video, but my name is Millie. I am a prophet of God to the nations, life coach, mentor, as God has positioned me in all three. So listen, those of you who know me know I have no self-serving agenda. I am strictly here to set the captives free. So when I say that he created in me a clean heart, a new heart, not saying that I'm a perfect person, but most of my hurt came from internalizing um, things that were inflected or, in, or, or um, projected. There it is onto me offenses of others to me even though i was giving my love in places where it wasn't received still loving my enemies loving those who i knew were against me still loving them as the scriptures tells us to do right being used uh some people may call it gullible or whatever it is now i did have some wisdom with some things okay but still i'm sorry you guys but still Okay, I still had myself in this uh, vulnerable position, vulnerable position, and God used me, or worked with me rather, to have me still have this same giving heart, the same humble heart, the same heart of love. But He has placed a hedge of protection around my heart. This is something that I can't even. I'm gonna try to describe it the best I can right now. But I'm sorry, you guys, my phone keeps ringing. I thought I turned on, do not disturb. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this the best that I can because it is um, a supernatural thing, okay? This is nothing that you can will yourself to, to feel. Like you cannot make your heart heal. This is something God has to do. He can only guard your heart, just as the scripture says, even though we're supposed to guard our heart, hearts, and that comes from wisdom, right through the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to get into those scriptures here shortly. However, the healing part of it is only something that God can do. Like you cannot will that. And so if I can explain it best, and God has recently done this even more just over the past month, I will say where he's put such a fence of protection 
um, around my heart to where, here it is, I'm not swayed either way. So whether it's, okay, here's a good example. So a lot of you, like I see your comments, I see you guys, I can't respond how I used to because things are just growing. I'm, I'm too busy, like I'm doing too much, but it's all good. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing for the Lord. But I'm saying that I see your comments. I see, you know, the, the prayers that you guys pray for me and your, your kind words and all of that. And I'm not moved by it, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't puff me up. It doesn't, I don't feel anything move my heart. Okay. Even here in this heart, my mind. Okay. I don't like I receive it, but I don't attach to it. And this is not a, um, a position of arrogance or anything like that. God has fixated me so that I'm not um, swayed to um, the pleasure of the people. There it is. Or I'm not moved so that what you all are saying moves me off post. There it is. And then on the other side of that, the small percentage of persecution and all of that, which I know comes with the territory, so I'm not concerned. But anyway, as that comes, God has really worked on my heart in that area because it's not nice, you know, when people say things about you that aren't true, right? Just as Jesus had to has to deal with us every day when we don't believe him, when we don't trust him. This hurts him, okay? When he knows he's telling the truth. And so this is why the Holy Spirit, this is why God tells us to test the spirit. So you know, right? My God. So anyway, whenever those comments come or emails or whatever it is, I don't feel anything like those darts or the, that little mini heart attack that might try to come up, you know, or that sting. Like, you guys, I don't feel any of it, okay? So I know this is God who has put this fence on my heart, who has allowed me to let go of, of offenses and not to internalize um, rejection or projection onto me of false things, if I can just say it that way, right? And so let's talk about the heart. So in the heart itself is your inner man, your inner woman. It's your mind. It's your heart, okay? It's your will, your determination. It's your moral character, understanding. It's your soul. It's knowledge, thinking, reflection, memory, conscience, okay? This is why some of you can't let go of offenses because the memory, the reflection of the things that have happened to you, um, emotions also are held in our hearts and passions and, and things like that. So whether it's this heart or this one, okay? This is what God is, re is renewing. Mind and then some of us physically, the heart, because I felt what it feels like to be heartbroken, where it felt like somebody just took my heart out of my chest and threw it on the ground and ran over it with a transfer truck and put it back in. Like, I see how people can pass away from broken hearts. Like, it's no joke. Okay, and when my heart was broken like that, I had lost my, my mom and grandma um, like a year to the date apart from each other. And my heart was just mush. Like, you know, I didn't understand it. So I'm here to tell you, God will do it. He is near to the brokenhearted and he saves the crushed in spirit. He will renew your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. So let me um, just read a few scriptures. And I kind of was talking about the one in Psalm 51. I'm going to start at verse 10 through 15, where the psalmist is saying, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. That is a steadfast spirit or a loyal spirit. Do not cast me away from your presence or do not take, and I'm sorry, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. This is verse 12. And that's, I kind of want to touch on this right here. The joy of your salvation has been lost. The, the saving grace that God has given you, a lot of you don't have your joy anymore. Therefore, your spirit is not willing to forgive. Your spirit is not willing to let go. And so God has to give you a willing mind, a willing spirit, a willing heart, right? To let it go so that you can move forward. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. I saw someone in the comments on part one that was saying that the Lord was just speaking to them that morning before I released the word and was telling them, let it go, let it go. And even singing it like the Disney song, right? God is so good. Here it is. A lot of you are missing God because you're still in a form of religion. God will speak through anything, whether it's a Disney song, whether it's a donkey from days of old, whether it's signs, wonders, whatever it is, he will speak. He said he will give nations for your ransom. He will do whatever he needs to do to draw you back to him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So verse 13 says, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you after you restore the joy of my salvation and sustain me in and sustain in me a willing spirit. So this is why God needs to heal your hearts. Most of you, God is using you. Okay. And he's going to use what you've been through so you can teach other people, transgressors, as the scripture says, or backsliders or sinners. You're going to be an example. Your life is going to be an example of Christ and how he's cleaned you up, how he's healed you, how he's Romans 8, 28 at your life, where he's working it all together for good because you love him and you're answering the call according to your purpose. And so he's going to use you to teach others just by your life. Some of you, you know, you're going to be out in ministry. Some of you marketplace ministry, wherever you are. Whoever is in Christ, we should all be discipling souls, okay? So he's going to use your life as an example after he um, creates in you this clean heart and renews you. Woo, Holy Spirit. Verse 14, deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. Verse 15 says, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. And this is uh, something that the Lord had me prophesy. Um, I think it was last week where he said that he was opening your mouth. A lot of you, he's going to start opening your mouths so that you can speak the word of God in a manner such as this or wherever he's placing you, right? He's opening your mouth. He's opening your mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. Your, your mouth, your voice has been silenced for too long by the things that have happened to you. And that was just the trick of the enemy, okay, to keep you from advancing and moving forward into your purpose. This was your bondage. This was your spiritual Egypt. And so God is moving you forward out of that in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then you will declare his praise at that time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. My God. A few more scriptures. Uh, Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is very important. Some of you are not seeing God because your um, heart is not pure, because it's hard. And this is not saying that you're an evil person. This is just saying your that life has hardened your heart. It has hardened your heart. And so you have to let go of those offenses, which God is going to do that. He's going to give you that heart transplant. Thank you, Holy Spirit, so that you can see him. You can see him for who he is. You can see him like Jacob saw him at Peniel. That's where he named the place or what he named the place, Peniel, that he finally saw God. This is where God was changing him, his name, his identity from Jacob to Israel. Okay, no longer wrestling with God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My God, have your way. So Matthew 15, 13 says, a glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is crushed. And literally some of y'all walking around here, Okay, looking like tails from the crypt by the face, just all scrunched up. <laughs> you know, like, come on, somebody. You're supposed to have joy in your heart. This is not to say life is not going to happen and you're going to have sad days, but you're just walking around with your face contorted all day and nothing's physically wrong with you. There's no physical defect in you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help me today. But by sorrow of heart, the spirit is crushed, right? So this is why God is renewing your heart to, again, he's near to the brokenhearted and he saves the crushed in spirit. So he's trying to get you to the place where he's healing you from your hurt, your pain, that crushing feeling of your life and your, your being, okay? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Proverbs 17, 22, I got 
Three more scriptures, you guys. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up bones. Mark 12, 30 says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And so this again is the heart, as I explained earlier, your inner man, the mind, your conscience, like all that stuff. You got to love God with all of that. And some of you are not in love with him. You're not in love with Jesus. You're not in love with Yahweh. You're not in love with the Holy Spirit because you have to be renewed in your heart. So this is why you can't see him because the heart needs to be circumcised. Once it's circumcised, you can love him as Matthew 12, 30 says. You'll finally know and feel what it feels like to be in love with the Lord. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful feeling and experience. Uh, Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This is what God's word does. It discerns your heart and your thoughts, okay? Those intentions. This is what God judges, the intent of heart. So I've said this before and I'll have to find the scripture. If some of you find it, just put it in the comments for me. But the scriptures talks about this, how God knows those who belong to him and those who don't, or those who belong to him and those who don't. Um, those who are pure, pur purely created for evil, like their purpose, such as a Judas. And then some of us who just do things out of misunderstanding, out of ignorance, you know, perishing for lack of knowledge. Like he understands this. This is why he's long suffering and patient and grace is um, available to us, right? So that he gives us time. He, he wakes us up. He loves us so much to give us time, <laughs> to reroute us back on the path that he destined us to go on when we, we give ourselves to him, when we lay our lives now to live for him. Thank you, Lord. Last scripture, Psalm 139, 23 through 24 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. This is a brave prayer, okay? And see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in a way or in the way, everlasting. And I prayed this prayer as well um, when I was going through my healing process. I prayed that, that scripture, Psalm 139, 23 through 24, and Psalm 51, 10 through um, 12 specifically is what I prayed when I was going through my wilderness for God to restore me and to heal me and to even bring back to my memory some of the things that I thought I had gotten over, right? So my God, I pray whoo, that this word has been a blessing to many of you, that it has clarified what God is doing in your life and how he's waiting for you to just lay it all at the altar so that he can heal your heart. This is nothing you can make yourself do. God has to clean that residue out of you so that you can move forward and cross over into your promised land, okay? Mm, my God, this is such a yummy word. <laughs> I love you guys so much with the love of Christ. Thanks for tuning in. Share this with someone that you feel it may be a blessing to. Listen to it a few times to get it in your spirit so that you're not at the same pl place, rather, this time next year. You don't want to be circling around the mountain and this time next year, you're still going through this, right? God is moving very quickly in this hour. It's acceleration time. He's like pushing us through in the mighty name of Jesus. So take heed to the word of the Lord. Um, thank you all so much for praying for me. Those of you who are generously sowing into the ministry, may the Lord continue to bless you 100 fold, okay? I will talk to you all soon. Get busy.